In the second half of 2018, Novak Djokovic was not only dominant in the majors, but the smaller tournaments as well, as he won Cincinnati and Shanghai, and reached his finals of the Paris Masters and the year in ATP Finals. In 2019, this is not the case, however, as though the Serbian was successful down under getting his 15th major title, he's been noticeably struggling in the smaller tournaments. Before Australia, Novak's form was shaky for all of the Doha tournament and he eventually fell to Roberto Batista Gu. In India Wells, his form looked rusty in his opening round match against Juan Frantangelo, and in the next round, he lost to Philip Kohlschreiber in straight sets. Here's what he said after that loss. I liked my chances more at night uh, against Cole Schreiber, but uh, uh, it wasn't to be last night. It was raining, uh, but completely different conditions today. Ball bounce is much higher, and uh, obviously he uses his spin very well. I, I wasn't feeling, I wasn't playing well. And, you know, one of those days, I uh, congratulate him for, for, you know, playing uh, tactically really well and, and getting me out of my comfort zone. and. He deserved to win. At this year's Miami Open, Novak continued his shaky form as he struggled against Bernard Tomic and Federico Del Bonas to reach the last 16. His game improved, though, it was dominating his opponent, Bautista Agu, when in the first set 6 1, when the rain came, everything changed as Novak would end up dropping the match in three. Here's what he said after that match Just lost two matches. Those two days didn't work. <clears throat> Game you was no, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I thought I played well today and throughout this entire tournament, I just, yeah, just won two, three sluggish games and uh, that's what happens. Now, here we are at Monte Carlo and Novak has had yet another shaky start early on in the tournament, dropping a set to Philip Kohlschreiber. His game improved, though, as he subsequently dominated Taylor Fritz in the following round. When he played his quarterfinal match today against Daniel Medvedev, he wasn't close to his best, and it showed as he lost again in three sets. This is what he had to say after this match. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, French Open is the, is the ultimate goal in play, and uh, I, I hope I can, I mean, for sure. I mean, it's expected in a way to, uh, for me to, to peak right at that, that tournament because that's what I'm aiming for, and this is... Uh, and only the first tournament on clay, and it's, uh, it's a long season, so let's see how it goes. <clears throat> the reason why I'm playing his reactions to his losses is to show that he isn't too worried about them. Yes, he does seem a bit disappointed, but overall, he's not too beat up about these losses, which is, in my opinion, not a bad thing. As you can see, after his Monte Carlo loss, he talked about how the French Open was his main priority and how his goal is to peak for that particular event. As the players get older, they need to focus more on prioritizing their events and they are more worried about the majors than other things. It's not that he's intentionally losing these matches, but he doesn't place a heavy importance on them like he does the majors. At this year's Australian Open, Novak was dialed in in almost every point, especially in the latter stages of the tournament. During this event, Novak was in his peak form as both his mind and body were both at their best. It's rare for this to happen, and I just think Nole is preserving this play for only the majors. It's like he's almost afraid to play at his best. In his press conference today, he also said that he was tentative to go for some of his shots. I think that he'll need to start going for them more because it's difficult to play tentative for months at a time, then try to turn it on for two weeks. So therefore, for his next two tournaments, which is Madrid and Rome, he needs to be more aggressive and go for his shots more to help him peak better for their French Open. Do you think Novak will indeed peak for Roland Garros, or do you believe it will be too late for him to do so when the time comes around? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you here next time on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.